how have you seen a demon manifest? You know, you you look at movies like The Exorcist and you see, you know, her eyes change, her skin changes, the temperature in the room often gets either extremely cold or extremely hot. She levitates. Um, she Her voice gets very odd. She does speak in other languages. What have you personally witnessed in terms of manifestation of demons? I've witnessed all those things. You've seen someone levitate? You've- I've seen someone levitate during an exorcism, eyes rolled in the back of the head, foaming at the mouth, growling and snarling. The reason the voice gets deeper is that it's kind of like a wild dog that's barking. It's meant to instill fear. You know, the notion is the louder you are, then maybe you're trying to prove that you're greater than you really are. Mm-hmm. Stenches in the room. No, I always say that when a demon manifests, the stench is about 100 times worse than the raccoon that's been hit on the side of the road that's been baking in the sun for the last 10 days. So it's really things that are just really putrid in nature. And the reason for all the manifestations and the distortion of the human body is that the person, the human person is created in the image and likeness of God. And the devil believes that by distorting the image of the person who's possessed, that in an indirect way, he's distorting the image of God. One thing that you see in that movie is that, I'm trying to remember, I was going to I was gonna rewatch The Exorcist in preparation, but my husband is a big chicken and wouldn't watch it with me. Tyler, I have to call out Jeremy, you know that. So I did not. So I'm trying to think back. I've seen it a bunch of times. I love the movie. Um, first of all, to me, if you're a skeptic, there has to be a line here, right? I mean, if someone is levitating, that is not going to be a sign of mental illness. So I'm always like, how do you not at that point acknowledge that something beyond just mental illness is happening? I mean, maybe you could account for growling and other things, but levitation, I can't conceive of how you would witness that and not immediately say, okay, this is beyond just a trip to a psychologist today. Have you? Do you have people who doubt even at that point? Like, oh, you saw someone levitate, Father? Oh, no, that's just, um, I don't know, some sort of muscular condition. Or is that what they say, the skeptics? I think so, yeah. They, they, they don't want to believe it, because if one believes it, it requires one to make a change in their life. You have to reevaluate what it is that you believe and think. And if one can reject the reality of evil, then one can reject God. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that you see in those films as well, in that one in particular, um, I'm speaking about the film, uh, what was that made? Tyler, can you check for me the original Exorcist, just so we can we know t- for the audience what we're referencing. One thing that does happen is the demon bounces into the priest in that film, and he winds up dying as a result of it. He senses that, and I believe, if I'm remembering it correctly, he tosses himself out a window because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to be... Um, I guess, a conduit for evil in any way. Are you ever worried that in that room you could be compromised by the demon? That cannot happen if the priest is following the necessary steps. That's why I say there's no such thing as an emergency exorcism. If the priest doesn't follow what the church has laid out, that's when one gets himself into trouble. What if you were to follow what the church laid out, though, and I apologize for interrupting, but what if internally you didn't have the sound faith everybody thinks that you did? Let's say, for example, and a priest walks into a room, could they, could that happen? Could that, could that happen to a priest who maybe was struggling with doubt um, and people didn't know it? Absolutely. Because that's where the demon would attack. He would try to enter through that form of doubt as an entry point. And that's why it's so important, again, to make sure that the priest has really prepared himself properly as well as everyone else in the room. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here, or you can catch the full episode right here.